Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at noon. A heartbreaking scene in Grand Forks this morning when the body of fallen officer Cody Holty was escorted through the city. Grand Forks police posted this video right here to Facebook. It shows dozens upon dozens of emergency vehicles, including sheriffs, deputies, police officers, fire crews, and paramedics driving through town. It wasn't just responders from the Northern Valley either. You'll spot squad cars from around the area. No other information is being released at this time about services for the young man. The Grand Forks Police Department also says a memorial fund for Holty's family has now been set up. The information, it's up on your screen. It's called the Cody Holty Memorial Fund, and it's at First State Bank. That's at 2500 32nd Avenue South in Grand Forks. The fund is sanctioned and affirmed by the police department. The memorial for the fallen officer has now moved inside the Grand Forks Police Department. Flowers, cards, and flags are laid out across the table in the lobby, but you can see right there, those flowers and flags are still being collected outside of the department as the community comes together to grieve. And the city is now lit up in blue to honor Officer Holty. It's just a simple gesture of sympathy for the officer and his family, along with the rest of the law enforcement community. A breaking news update on the riots and protests in the Twin Cities. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz addressed the state today and said that we have to restore order. The governor says the situation right now does not allow for leaders to tackle the true issues of racial injustice that have been brewing in the nation for the past 400 years. Meanwhile, Minnesota authorities are trying to get a handle on the escalating violence in Minneapolis. The unrest stems from the death of George Floyd, a black man who died in police custody. Last night, protesters set fire to a police precinct. Nicole Killian has our story. State police officers in riot gear backed by the National Guard moved in to secure the streets of Minneapolis as fires continued to burn in the morning hours. Last night, protesters set fire to the police station where the four officers involved in the arrest of George Floyd worked before they were fired. The mayor of Minneapolis ordered the building evacuated and defended his decision to let it burn. The symbolism of a building uh, cannot outweigh the importance of life of our officers or the public. We could not risk serious injury to anyone. It was one of many fires set in the city, including this building that partially collapsed. There has also been widespread looting. Corboy Vala had to fend off looters who tried to steal the safe from his sports bar. It's not fair, it's not right. You know, we've been working so hard for this place. No, this is not just for me, it's for my family. Protesters want the four officers involved in the incident to be criminally charged with Floyd's death immediately. This delay seems like it's suggesting that you are going to try to sweep his death under the rug. Minneapolis police say Derek Chauvin, the officer seen with his knee on Floyd's neck, has had 18 complaints against him in his career, but faced discipline for only two. Protests in the wake of George Floyd's death have spread across the country, including here in Washington, D.C. And dozens were arrested during protest in New York City. You're under arrest. Okay. Do you mind oh, whoa, telling whoa, whoa, whoa. me why I'm under arrest, sir? Back in Minneapolis, a CNN reporter and his crew were arrested this morning while on the air. Minnesota State Police say they were released once they were confirmed to be members of the media. Nicole Killian, CBS News, Washington. President Donald Trump is calling protesters in Minneapolis thugs and vowing that, quote, when the looting starts, the shooting starts, end quote. His post is up on your screen right now. Twitter then flagged that tweet as violent, and you have to click on an extra button to view it. Tomorrow, people in Fargo are expected to come together and march for George Floyd. It's starting at 10 in the morning, and the Facebook page for the event says it's going to start at Island Park. The group also says it wants the event to be a peaceful one. Now, we'll have more on this event tonight on Valley News Live and in our weekend coverage. Let's take that live look outside right now. Friday here in the Valley, in the Metro, sunny blue skies. To see what we can expect for the rest of our forecast, let's head on over to First Alert Storm Team meteorologist Justin Fanfarelli.
And thank you, Jordan. Good afternoon, everybody. Our quiet weather pattern does continue. Temperature is actually a little cooler than they should be this time of year, but that's not going to last for much longer. Here's a look at the low temperatures from last night. We had a clear sky than the previous night, so temperatures a little cooler than they should be. Our normal low in Fargo is 50 degrees, and we were at 44, a little cooler into the northern valley, as most of us had low temperatures tonight into the lower 40s. Temperatures rebounding nicely with the sunshine, lower 60s right now from Fargo to Jamestown into Lakes Country, the Northern Valley, Northwestern Minnesota into the upper 50s, mid 50s currently into the Devil's Lake Basin. Wind still from a northerly direction, still a little breezy, especially from the Fargo area into uh, Lakes Country with uh, wind speeds around 15.5 miles per hour, but uh, winds are diminishing out toward Devil's Lake and Jamestown. Let's take a look at the current satellite loop again. We got more sunshine the farther south you go, more cloud cover into the northern valley into north central Minnesota. And as you make your way out toward Williston, some rain showers. So here's the hour by hour forecast. We got mostly sunny skies. Going to keep that wind from a northerly direction as temperatures reach the upper 60s for today. Now we'll have a full look at the weekend weather and a warm up to start next week. Details coming up later in the newscast. All right, as we round out May and start June. Thank you very much, Justin. We have new information this afternoon on COVID-19 in the area. The state of Minnesota says 29 more people have died from the virus, bringing the death toll to 996. 811 of those deaths happened in a long-term care facility. 590 more cases were being reported today, bringing the active case count to 5,605. 16,930 people have recovered. The state of North Dakota is reporting two new deaths related to coronavirus. Both victims were from Cass County, one a man in his 70s, the other a woman in her 90s. That brings a total of 59 deaths linked to the virus. 40 more cases were reported today, bringing the active case count to 638. 1,882 people have recovered. Employees may soon be screamed for coronavirus when they arrive at work every day. That's according to the latest guidance from the CDC for how workplaces can reopen. The guidelines also suggest keeping employees six feet apart and replace highly touched communal objects with single serve items. Shifts and break times should also be staggered and handshakes and fist bumps should be prohibited. Employees are also recommended to wear a face mask at all times. In our consumer alert this morning, spending saw a record-breaking plunge last month. The Commerce Department released the numbers today, showing a 13.6% drop in April. Stores shuttered and millions stayed home because of the coronavirus pandemic. April's drop was far worse than March's 7% decline. But even as nearly 40 million people lost jobs, personal income soared 10.5%. However, that's reflecting the billions in aid from the federal government. And while spending is down, savings apparently are going up. The U.S. Bureau of Economic Analysis said today that Americans are hoarding their cash. The personal savings rate hit 33 percent in April, by far the, far the highest record since the department started tracking it back in the 1960s. It's nearly twice as high as the old record of 17.3 percent back in 1975. The rate is calculated comparing how much people save as a percentage of their disposable income. Coming up here at noon, the video conferencing website Zoom is coming out with virtual game nights. Find out how you and your friends can come together while staying home. But next, Justin Fanfarelli is in with what you need to know for our Friday forecast.